we are told that f of n is equal to f of n minus one plus six. So the value of this function for each term n is defined in terms of the value of the function for previous terms. We're essentially adding six to the previous term. For each whole number n, where n is greater than one, and f of one is equal to eight. Whenever you define something recursively like this, where you're defining it in terms of a previous term, you have to set up an initial point that you can start with. And we'll see in a second why that's important. Now what I want you to do is pause this video and based on this definition, figure out what the value of the function is for n equals one, two, three, and four. And then we're going to graph that and we're going to discuss that graph. All right, now let's work through this together. And so let me, in this column, let me have n, and here I will have f of n. So we'll start with n equals one. That's pretty straightforward. They tell us that f of one is equal to eight. That was pretty straightforward. Now let's go to when n equals two. Well, f of two is equal to f of two minus one, so it's equal to f of one plus six, plus six. Well, we know that f of one, we just figured it out, is eight. So it's equal to eight plus six, which is equal to 14. Well, let's keep going, maybe in purple. All right, so now we wanna figure out what f of three is going to be equal to. Well, same idea, it's going to be equal to f of three minus one, or f of two, plus six, we keep adding six every time. So f of two, we just figured it out, is 14. This is strangely fun. 14 plus six, that is equal to 20. And then last but not least, maybe in light blue, when n equals four, well, let's figure out. f of four is going to be equal to f of three plus six, which is equal to 20, f of three is 20, plus six, which is equal to 26. So you might have noticed a pattern here. We start with when on our first term, the value of the function is eight. And then what did we do? We added six. And then to get to the next term, we added six again. And then we added six again. And so we should see that visually when we actually try to graph it. So let's graph it here. And actually, instead of calling this the x axis, let me call this the n axis. And the y-axis, let's just call that y is equal to f of n. And so let's take that first point. When n equals one, the value of our function is eight. One, eight, it gets you right about there. Then when n is two, we get to 14. Two, 14, right about there. When n is three, we get to 20. So that is there. And then last but not least, when n is four, we get to 26. 26 gets us right about there. So you might notice something very interesting here. It looks like these dots are on a line. Now this isn't a line, because we're only defining this for whole number n's, but we can see it looks like a line. And every time we move forward by one, we are moving up by six. We move forward by one, we're moving up by six. So if this were a line, if I were to try to connect a dot with, or connect to these dots with a line, that line would have a slope of six because we our change in n is one, and then our change in y, or change in the value of our function, is going to be six every time. So in general, if someone shows you a sequence like this, and this is really an arithmetic sequence where each term is a previous term plus or minus some fixed amount, you're going to see something that looks linear. If you saw a curve, then that wouldn't, or something like dots on a curve, then that wouldn't be an arithmetic sequence. That would be something else. But if you see dots that seem to form or be points on a line, that's a pretty good clue that you're dealing with an arithmetic sequence.